Good morning guys. Well, I say good morning. That sky is absolutely dark grey. But I wanted to get out today because um, if you're tuning in today to see a humorous vlog, then I'm afraid you're going to be a little bit disappointed because I'm going to have a rant today. And um, what I would like is an honest response from most of you guys out there because uh, I sort of need to know if I'm being, uh, if I'm overreacting on this or whether I'm right or whether you would have reacted even worse. But uh, the thing is, you don't really know uh, your fellow vloggers that well unless you actually do know them, in which case you do know them. But uh, what I mean by that is there's plenty of guys out there that I watch vlogs of and I quite like them. I like what I see. and you sort of get a little bit of a handle on what they're about and a little bit of an idea of their character and the guys I watch are people that I'm convinced that if I met them I'd get on with them really well they become good mates so I hope that the guys that have watched my videos will sort of see that I'm an old geezer with a good sense of humour and I like a good laugh and basically that's me I've never grown up but there you go um, not a lot, I say not a lot, tends to wind me up. But the thing that does wind me up covers a huge area. And what winds me up is inconsiderate people. So what do I mean by inconsiderate people? Well, quite easy. <laughs> people who really just do things that or do what they want to do and they don't think of how that impacts or how that affects or the thought of anyone else when they do it and it is the reason I want you to respond is because it is very easy for us to have a one-sided view and someone else might look at what I'm going to tell you the couple of instances that happened yesterday to me and say so what mate it doesn't mean anything but um, that's why I, I suppose I need a reality check. Was I right? Am I wrong? I'm to get so wound up about it. So let's take the instances that happened yesterday. Instance number one, I actually went out on the phaser yesterday because I fitted a, a sat nav and I wired it in and I just wanted to get the position. You can probably see the cradle there. Uh, I just wanted to see how I'd fare with it because I haven't got a a headset or anything with it and I just wanted to go out and see how that sort of went on the bike and where I live my garage is detached but it's uh, there's a little alleyway between the house and the garage and at the end of the garage the guy that owned the house previously he, he built a little office it's only a tiny little room but what I've done is I've knocked through into the garage and I sort of use that still as an office but I put all my gear in there so I can sort of stroll out into that room and get changed into my motorcycle gear out there. And I thought, I'll just shoot out, quick run round the block, not you know, 10 minutes, just to see how, just to see how the sat nav performed on the bike. And I went into the garage and I've got uh, a flat roof garage and it's covered in felt. It's a bit like a, a garden shed roof but uh, a little bit more substantial but not an awful lot. It's a pretty cruddy roof to be honest with you. And I was aware while I was in the garage of this scraping noise and this banging on top of the garage. And at first I thought, well, is that one of my cats up there? And I thought, no, it can't be that heavy unless it's eaten a lot during the night. And I sort of came out the garage and walked into the back garden. So I was looking at the back of the garage and took a few steps back. And the first thing I saw was this yellow hose sticking off at the end of my garage roof. So then I walked back a little further and there is a guy standing on my garage with one of those um, long poles with a brush on the end and a hose connected to it and he was cleaning the fascia board of my neighbour's house. So 
I, I sort of damn straight for a little while and I sort of said to him, uh, excuse me, what are you doing? And he said, uh, oh, I'm, I'm cleaning the fascia boards, mate. And I said, well, yes. I meant, what are you doing on my garage roof? Oh, I knocked on your door, but you were out. And I said, well, clearly I'm not out. Uh, I doubt very much if you did not, but if you did, and I wasn't in, I would suggest that you don't just automatically think, oh, he's not in, so I'll go onto his property anyway. I said, I wouldn't have minded. I would have said, fine, you know, off you go, do what you have to do. Be a bit careful. It's not a very stable roof up there. But uh, the thing that uh, got my goat was the fact that he didn't ask. Oh, sorry, mate. Won't happen again, was the, uh, the reply I got. Well, considering that the facial board probably gets cleaned about once a year, the situation isn't going to occur again for another year. But that wasn't the end of it. I then continue, got my bike out the garage, walked back in to get my helmet and gloves, came back out and when he moved to the front of the fascia boards, he quite successfully managed to splash water all over the seat of my bike. Deliberately or not, I don't know. What for having a go at someone on my garage? I'm not sure. Um, I then said to him, look, now that's enough mate, can you get down please? And the answer was, I'll finish now. But, how, you know, I couldn't comprehend. I, I'm somebody that, I do try, I'm sure it doesn't happen all the time, but I do try wherever possible to think about how what I do impacts on others. And I do try and appreciate that not everyone has the same point of view on things. And it just amazed me that this guy thought it was quite natural. I've got to clean it anyway, so I just climb on his garage roof, you know, it don't really matter what he thinks about it. And I think that's out of order. Uh, I haven't talked to the neighbour yet. I will be talking to them today because they were out yesterday. And uh, I will be saying that really he's their responsibility and I don't want anyone on my roof without them at least coming and asking my permission. But at the same time, I'd like to get on with my neighbours, but what are your views on that one? I'll be interested to hear that one, guys. That was the first one. The second thing that happened yesterday, if it had been one, I probably wouldn't have been doing this vlog, but the fact that it was two. The second thing that happened yesterday was that... I live at the front of a cul-de-sac and it's one of those cul-de-sacs that as you drive into it there are other little legs going off and one of those legs is opposite us. And there is a family who live in that, uh, that section opposite that have about six cars. And they've got a huge drive anyway, so normally there's uh, three or four outside their house, there's one across the road and there's one round the corner. On occasion, I think on three other occasions, they park their car, or one of their cars, outside my house. Now, the road is very thin, and they park on the other side of the road. Hello, Mr. Birdie? Mr. Magpie? Um, for those of you who don't live in England, wave into a magpie. <laughs> it's because I'm mental. Um, yeah, so they parked out on the other side of the road and when I pull off my drive in my car it makes it very awkward for me to turn because I've got a wall, I can't turn straight away I have to turn once the back of the car is sort of clear of the wall which means I have to go over the road quite a bit uh, and it's very tight to get past when they park there Also, my neighbour he, park, he reverses onto his drive, he actually pulls forward so his car is on the other side of the road then reverses back onto his drive as it were so when they park there they don't just inconvenience me they inconvenience my neighbour as well and I've been over to their house three times and said excuse me please would you mind not parking opposite my house because it does make it awkward for me coming off of my driveway and driving down the road and that's good, I was in the wrong gear then, because I was chatting. Uh, anyway, yesterday afternoon, after the incident with the guy on the roof, they parked their car there. Not only that, it's still there this morning when I get up, and today is uh, Father's Day, Sunday by the way, and 
Not only that, when I walk round to ask them to move it again, because um, I, it does make it awkward, and I've done it before, there's a huge space outside their own house. So, again, that sort of thing winds me up. The fact that I'd already been round there three times to say, it does make it awkward for us, please don't park there, and the same lady still parks there. And I can't get into my head, if one of my neighbours had said to me, look, which I've never done by the way, you park your car in such a way that it does make it awkward for me, I wouldn't do it again. And am I making too much of all this? Should I just chillax and take a chill pill or take up drinking again? That might help. I don't know, I mean, what do you guys think? So that's my rant today. Uh, honest answers please, guys. Did I overreact to a guy on my garage roof? Am I overreacting to a neighbour's inconsiderate parking? What stories have you got? If you're a biker, ride safe. If you're not a biker, be safe. I'm going home before it pours and I'm going to watch the British Motor GP. Take care guys and see you all on the 24th. Providing it isn't raining because I don't like the wet. See you guys.